One, two, three. Welcome, everyone, to the Discord call between myself and Chris Motherfucker Wilson. How are oh, you God, doing? He today, is man? going with that. Oh no. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, every, now, now, all the four people that are going to see this are going to be like, "He's the motherfucker," and I'm going to be sitting there and going to be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Oh yeah, no, yeah, 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 I am the motherfucker that runs, of course, Headbanger Reviews. You do some stuff on uh, Metal Addicts here and there as well, as we've been talking so far. But may maybe you should introduce yourself, because I, I, you know more about you than I do, obviously. Oh, God, I wish I didn't. Um, can't say it any other way. I'm just some asshole with a keyboard, um, which is like, aren't, aren't, all, aren't we all? Aren't, aren't we all at the end of the day? But no, I've been, I, I'm the dude behind Headbanger Reviews. Uh, if you've heard of me, thank you so much. Uh, if not, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's all, it's, it's all, I just review albums that I like. Um, I've been doing one review a day for, oh God, I think last month was seven years. There'd be no way for me to say it out of the way. It's been life changing. It really has. It's of my eyes to so much good music. And, I believe you. And so many good people. I believe me too. For those who maybe don't know, I was reviewing a little bit at first, Angelus Mortem dot com but uh yeah it wasn't really bringing me the satisfaction i wanted because I, I i genuinely think no one really reads much anymore so then i was filling my articles with videos and pictures and i'm like you know if i'm gonna make most of this videos and pictures i might as well just make videos you know so we come from the same place i feel and that's a that's a sound logic i'd say but without getting too sidetracked here uh we're talking about transcending obscurity records we're gonna go back all the way to the end of the Bandcamp page pretty much um obviously tor has been around for quite some time even before it was a label it was around as a as a fanzine i believe kunal was just kind of writing reviews um in a zine in, in india I, if i'm not mistaken i think so um i don't know much about those days yeah i, I remember back. it wasn't transcending obscurity then i think it was um diabolical conquest i think it went back to like 2000, oh yeah 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 now 2004 Mm -hmm. And then I think he just really wanted to do more and now, of the, the first album that he put out. My bad. <laughs> you're you're yeah, going to hear, no, you guys are going to hear okay. us apologizing a lot. So I was about to say, we're just going to yeah, cut no, each other off the problem is, rampant. Is the, yeah. <laughs> the audio is not quite cued. So like, it's like a, it's like a second delay when I say something on Chris's side and then it's it like, is, it's, it's uh, magnificent. My associations with the label, specifically Kunao Choksi. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sh He'll give me a solid talking to over Facebook, I'm sure. We started sending emails back and forth because uh, he used to do a, his own PR for labels like Extreme Music and mm. Memento Mori. And he would yeah, send love stuff. Those labels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, he would send stuff to me and he would get talking back and forth. And he'd be like, hey, man, do you mind doing this album? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll see what I can do. And if I can, then I do. And if I can't, then I, then I don't um and he's always been real mm. humble and that's been one of the big things is like it's just constant humbleness constant just warm-hearted while delivering the goods in so many ways the absolute monolith that is transcending obscurity records right now i mean india like you know india has a, a big big scene but on an international level i feel like it's severely underrated uh, like, just the awesomeness of the bands over just... there Dude, like it i mean even transcending obscurity could tell you like just itself because even though most people know transcending obscurity as um the international powerhouse that it is when it comes to its roster but a lot yes. of not enough people know about the past sub labels that the label had like transcending obscurity india or transcending obscurity asia and let me tell you right now for a hot minute the india sub label was hotter in my opinion than the main label because you had bands like mm -hmm. Primitive and Brudra on it, and holy shit, dude, those still fucking slap. Like, Absolutely. Like capital S, slap. Slapping me harder than my daddy. Mm. Mm. Uh, I mean, TR has been around for a while. They've been doing a lot. But we're going to talk um, 2016 and forward, and then we're also going to go over... We're not going to go super in-depth with the 2020 stuff, because Chris reviewed it all. And I reviewed it all, so we have that in common. I still want to mention bands like The Dead, Norse, um, uh, Preludium, and even the um, uh, Drug Honky. 
they were there before the label was anything yeah, massive whatsoever. And props to them because I was about to say we see Drug Honky come back in 2017. I think it was with Cloak of Skies, but yeah, we're gonna yes, like you said, we're gonna go from 2016 onwards, and we're we're not talking about every single release. We'll be here all day. Oh, there's way too many. And you guys will there's get sick of us. Many. I mean, we could. We, we easily could. Oh, we absolutely could. We but won't for your sake, guys. We won't. It'll be five minutes before you're like, <laughs> fuck these guys, and you go turn off the fucking thing. So, like, for me, example, right now, because I, I got a fucking list here, guys. Let me tell you what. Paganizer, which is, I feel like, the first staple of the label. I think we can all agree on that. Oh, yeah. And it's, they, they, I got a lot to say about Paganizer mm-hmm. later on. Edit Zombie. That's Mark Reddick's solo band. Not a lot of people may not know of. That is probably the first album that I heard from Transcendent Gibbs Security that I was like, holy fucking shit, this is awesome. Uh, then we got Soothsayers uh, EP um, at this great depth. Uh, I still love that EP to death. Yeah. And I was very excited to see their new album coming out uh, here in the next few months. Uh, which, if you go to my website right now, you can see a review for it up. A little shameless plug. Intense, nudge, nudge. It is called Echoes of the Earth, and I've I've read the review already. I'm pretty freaking hyped. I'm I'm trying to keep myself from listening to it early. Oh, I'm just weird like that, but it, uh, I'll probably it's, it's pretty I'll crack. Good. I think I'll crack. It's pretty. Good. <laughs> it's, it's it's um. Mm, mm. It's good. And then there's Swamp Delicious. Cults, the festival, which I feel like doesn't get enough attention. It's some really dark, almost kind of wet doom metal. And if you listen to it, I feel like you would know what I mean by wet. Then last but not in the least for me is a Sepulchral, Sep- yeah. Sepulchral Curses uh, album. Curse. At, at the of... end, at the onset of Extinction. Yeah. yeah Finish stuff. Oh. Good shit. And their new album last year is just simply, mm, it sizzles the lips. Yes, quite zesty indeed. Well, what are your picks then? Well, like I said, I don't have an extensive 2016 bank of knowledge, but as you mentioned, um, I mean, I've been a Paganizer fan even before TOR. Like, I remember, oh my god, I can't even think of like my favorite album from previously. I, I liked Carnage Junkie, um, Murder Death Kill, like that's a really old one. Um, but r- recently... The the main thing about Paganizer that I love, and I I might maybe save some of this for for the later discussions, because the new Paganizer stuff is very, very much um, sticks to its roots. It's traditional death metal, old school death metal, but it also has a lot of modern um, tropes in it that kind of it blends it that those two together, those two worlds together. And I feel like what you get is a really awesome like revival sound and Mm. Paganizer is seriously just treading the way for for this shit i mean like you know roga johansson in general uh he's, oh, he's fucking, fucking incredible God. like i don't even know how he manages like let, let's just name a few here we got dead son down among the dead men oh God. we got mega scavenger that he's in um and then like weird ass bands like i don't know fondle corpse <laughs> i didn't know about that one <laughs> neither did <laughs> I, a band I, called really. fondle corpse we're gonna have to yeah fondle corpse yeah, I mean, if you go to Metallum, it's like this freaking eldritch scroll of, of band citations that he's in. Paganizer is absolutely crazy. So, obviously, um, On the Outskirts of Hades is not a standout release if you were to compare it to the other Paganizer stuff um, on the label, but it was definitely a kick-ass album. I was also a fan of the fact that I'm a huge Deceased fan, U.S. Uh, deceased, and Transcending did put out a repress of fearless undead machines in 2016 so even then before the label was recognized um the way it is right now they were still getting their hands on some very very interesting shit um so yeah i i guess that's just a very like general overview i wish i could go in depth like i'm totally missing out on a lot here just staring i'm staring at the band camp page right now and i can just just by looking at the covers i'm it's just, it's just totally an missing out of a lot so I, it's your favorite album that year out of those that you mentioned well if i were to man see probably i probably like it's unfair that i'm actually it. even gonna i guess so yeah but see that that was an ep 
I don't know. It's kind of hard to pitch EPs against full lengths when I haven't even heard like oh, 90% I can't. I of the could, full lengths. I could do that all day. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just go for it then. Yeah. Okay, fine. Fuck it. 2016. <laughs> Favorite TOR release for me is On the Outskirts of Hades by Paganizer because I have listened to every 2016 release and that is the definitive best one in, in my uh, expert opinion. My shitty opinion. My expert opinion. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say for me, uh, certified best, uh, put a stamp on it, would be, um, it would definitely, for me, have to be Fetid Zombie, because that's, that's the one that really cracked my skull open, and the instrumentation on it is just next level out of this world. Uh, I think it's also technically an EP, I think, because it's only got four tracks on it. I don't know who decides this shit, I don't really care. Uh, the Metal but, Gods, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you, but it's just, it's one of those death metal releases that you hear and you're, it's just not at all what you expected, but it's, it's, it's so much more and it just keeps on giving to this day. Smooth transition into the next year. So well, 2017 was a big year for me because that was in fact the year that I discovered this freaking label and my life changed forever. I think a lot of the new releases, like labels put out shit every day you know and like it's Naturally. impossible to keep up with all of that stuff because you go crazy yeah but tor is one of those that i i just know it's going to be good and the album that convinced me of that if you don't mind me starting off here is go for it. lucifer's dream by mind cult oh, and, actually, and then i saw that box set stuff man and when i saw that box set i'm like okay i'll check this album out just to see if it's good and if it's good i will buy this box set because this is like the coolest box that i've ever seen i'm like a you know i'm really into collecting neat shit like that yeah. i love the album ordered it up and then i'm like you know these guys have tons of music on their on their label here so i, I just got into it after that but yeah mind cult was my first i lost my tr virginity <laughs> to mind cult oh, i'm not even gonna touch that i'm just gonna let that happen i'm not i'm not gonna follow that up that virginity joke whatsoever I'm a bit fucking weird if you haven't noticed. <laughs> That's fine. I am too, but I just sit there and I'm just like, because oh, it's like, what What do I imagine? Some Indian man bending you over and having his way? Like, well, I, I specifically said that my fault took my TOR virginity. Oh, right. I'm sorry. So it's, so it's a guy just south of DC. I got it. It's the guy on the cover. Completely. <laughs> for Lucifer Green. That dude who looks like he's getting, like, That's it. he's mid disintegration. Yeah, yeah, that pretty but, much. You yeah, know, real sleep paralysis. Guy. He showed up. And, yeah. You guys say how you doing? Mind cult to me, what made them special to me was just the way they were able to take that um, sort of classic doom sound. Like we're talking like Sabbath levels, you mm, know. Mm -hmm. But then they added that extra layer on top of like the album is so ominous. You know, it's it's a creepy record. Yeah, and I, I like that a lot. But then pair, pair it with the groove and everything, and fucking it's just, just it all comes together. For it's me got somehow. this. It, it's there's an off atmosphere to it, and I don't think yeah. there's other way. There's another way to explain it. It's just, it's just it's something off about it, and you can't quite put your finger on it, but you can't turn away from something it. Something strange. Yeah, it's like where did this come from? Who are these? Like, well, I think it's a one man project actually. It is. Isn't it? Yeah. Which blows my mind even further, because it's like, you got to think, this is all going on in the dude's head, and it's like, he came up with this by himself, like, that. that's pretty amazing. A close second, however, was definitely Land of Weeping Souls by Paganizer, and this was really the album from them that made me want to go back and check out all of their music because I fell in love with Paganizer since then. They're one of those underground acts that I feel like if you are familiar with the underground, you'll be like, oh, fucking right, Paganizer. And even if not, uh, their new shit still holds up really well. Um, if not, breaks that barrier, which is what so many other bands try to achieve where they know it or not. And it just comes off really well. It comes out really intoxicating. Every release they've done since uh, I started listening to them has been one banger after another without exception. What I love about them is that they have the ability to play a lot with those old school sort of sounds that we hear from, you know, like the 
Scandinavian sounds of the of the old days of the 90s but then they also combine that with a lot of like modern death metal so what you get is this incredible like I don't know revival a renaissance whatever you want to call it it's it's amazing and and in all of this oversaturation in OSDM Paganizer is still kicking ass and the great thing about them is that whether you like the old shit or the or the new shit there's so much to check out like they're just a limitless bundle of fun really paganizer yeah i'd have to agree now real quick i'm gonna have to pause my first time speaking with them ever over a call and it's going pretty well so far i'd say hopefully all my interviews are gonna go like this and all my collabs <laughs> Fuck. Uh, sorry about that. You're gonna have to give me another minute. I um, I found out why I had headache. Uh, I threw up. <laughs> oh, you just threw up? Yeah, I I feel fine though. I feel so much better. I yeah, I, I got like chicken earlier, so the chicken must have been undercooked, and I had this massive headache, and I was like, why do I have this headache? So I gotta clean this up real oh. quick. I, I'm still cool to go though. Don't get me wrong. I can hang up now if you need like extra time or whatever. No, 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 no. I just gotta wipe this stuff up, and then um. That's why I was like, I gotta let him get his flaw, and then I gotta fucking go, because I'm like, I can feel it coming. But, no, nah, oh, you're... Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just give me a minute. Okay, clean up your regurgitated carcass. Take me out tonight. I wanna see people, and I want to see light. And if a double decker bus kills the both of us, to die by your side, well, the pleasure is mine. <laughs> So um, the others I wanted to mention for 2017, honestly, was probably just the Grey Tomb EP because I love those guys to death. Okay. Um, but yeah, those are my picks. Like like Paganizer, Mindcult, and Grey Tomb are big ones for me. Then the other one on mine was a uh, Illimitable Dollar, Dollar, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, just because that was born from such raw emotion. Because all the members from that band, I think, I'm sure someone will yell at me, I think they were all from the slow death, and then one of the members died, and then this is like their lamentation, as it were. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so just, just, just knowing that and going into that debut album, you just, you feel that. A lot of death doom is like, you know, they talk about it's the grievances and just yeah. those emotions that just weigh down the soul. And there has been very few instances like what they pulled off with that debut that you just really felt that to your core. Yeah, you know, I, I find a lot of good music can come from like the darkest places. I think that's the backstory behind Bell Witch's um, mm. album too. Mirror the Reaper. Latest. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, because I think one of the members also had passed away, and they actually um, like during the recording process, I believe. Yeah, it was they had like uh, I think they had his last recordings in that, which adds a whole nother layer of just holy fuck to the mix. But anyway, we'll, we'll lift this shit right up, and let's just go into 2018, which, holy fucking shit, can we just agree on the record, put a stamp on it? This is where Transcending Obscurity became the name that it deserved yeah. to be. Right off the bat was Arketh, which still, for me, stands as one of the most outlandish albums that I've heard in all of black metal that works as well as anything that Transcending Obscurity has put out. That album is was absolutely my favorite the year it came out but uh, please don't let that uh, make anyone else think everything else in 2018 was trash because it's not. The first album that hit me real hard in 20. 
uh, 18 was definitely Dust of Eons by Towards Atlantis mm. Lights. As I mentioned mm. already, not a huge doom metal guy usually. And a half hour song right off the bat did turn me off, but I was open minded. I checked it out, and I have not experienced doom metal the same way since that album. That album opened up the door for me in terms of atmosphere building suspense that foreboding wall of sound and it's not just like lame ass like da, 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 over and over and over again like a lot of doom metal you know calls itself doom metal but it's just yeah. the same shit repeated over and over no 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 these guys really know how to make you like they absorb you into the album and it just like surrounds you it's all around you at all times and i, I love it i love the the ancient Greek references on here too. Oh, it's um, it, it's really good, and I think they're gonna double down on that in their new album. If the cover art was anything to go off of. I wholly agree with you saying that it's not just the same riff over and over again. And while I do feel that it has its place in doom metal, it really it doesn't does. craft an experience, which is absolutely what the Dust of Aeons accomplished. Yeah, for sure. There's a theme going here. You can really attach yourself to this music. And, and honestly, you can even ignore the context and just apply it to something else because it's really like... When you're looking at Death Doom, especially if, like, the whole... I hate using this word. But I use it a lot in my videos. I don't... I'm trying to use different words, but... Atmospheric Doom Death Metal, but, like... Yeah. When, it's, when it's in that vein, yeah. it really does hit you on a personal level. So I, I freaking love Towards Atlantis Lights. Another best of 2018 for me, too, had to be the first goddamn Depravity album, Evil oh. Upheaval. Woo! Oh, my... Uh, see, like, the great part about that is I'm not really into anything close to what might be called brutal death metal. To me, it's it's just too much for me. It's it's too much, and it's just, it's not a lot of, it's more, it feels just more raw energy than anything else, which can absolutely work, but I feel it needs at least a little bit of structure. Depravity took that and just ran with that it was just so intoxicatingly infectious oh the riffs i i don't even know we can talk we can compare them to bands and genres all day but i think just the pure raw like songwriting on i mean depravity release but evil of people blew my freaking mind for how relentless it is how punishing it is but also how groovy and catchy those riffs are man like Every track, I can't even list my favorites because I, I love them all. Like, from start to finish, this album blew me away. I didn't even have money at the time when this came out, but I fucking laid down some cash for that box set. Are you kidding me? I was like, <laughs> Depravity put, put me into debt. That's how much of a fan I am. No, like, straight up. <laughs> and that's a true testament to uh, Australia. Like, Australia just has a knack for me. Australia so does fucking work. Breaking. Arketh is from Australia. It's just throwing that Yeah, out I noticed there. that. Yeah, yeah. But Depravity got out there, man, and people are digging this shit. I see these guys mentioned um, here and there online, you know, and, like, people still come back to this album, and especially after their latest album which uh i did talk oh. about in my video so there's gonna be some some of that but after this segment guys after this segment, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get there in in due time and don't skip through i know how some of you motherfuckers are you like to scrub through and find those choice cuts but you people that are hearing this and not scrubbing through you're the real fans and you're who we made this for yeah. God damn right. And Chris you said get it, zero dollars in compensation. You should feel happy about that. If 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 we're just talking about death metal in general, I feel like we can't go any further without mentioning cater to your taste, uh, sadistic forest. Mm 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 mm. Spicy. It's just delicious, tasty riffs. It was. Love that. That's finished death. Finish right. 
Yes, they yes. are Finnish. And as I mentioned already, anything from Finland has the stamp of approval. For me, Finland and Italy are just guaranteed good metal countries for me. But yeah, very traditional um, Finnish old school death metal. But like I said, uh, similar to um, we were talking about Paganizer. Similar to Paganizer, they still have a lot of that modern stuff in there. So it's not just like raw OSDM. There's a lot of different shit going on at once. But the, yeah, the songwriting was impeccable. Well, we're talking about the album Morbid Majesties, by the way, just so you guys know. Correct. Um, but yeah, Sadistic Forest blew me out of the freaking water. And like, the thing is, I didn't really know what to expect. I never heard of these guys. The name kind of threw me off. Like, Sadistic Forest, is this a black metal project from someone's basement? Yeah, like, no, no, no. Sadistic these guys hey, need this. you doing here? This is how ridiculous 2018 was. Every month had something that just made you go, what the fuck is happening? Where did all these bands come from? All of them are awesome. Yeah. Fucking... Now, how do you pronounce it? Is it Doddsford, Dodsford? Help me out. I'm not Greek. I, I don't freaking speak that tongue, but I just let's go with Doddsford. I'm All sure right. well, Nick Dan will hear this, this and happen. come hang my entrails outside his house. It's fine. A disease remnants of a dying world. Holy shit. You want to talk about black metal that does its own thing? and is raw and emotional while not being afraid to just do something new, Dozeford is where you go. You got classics like Rotting Christ, Katie's Cruenta, awesome bands from Greece, but Dodsford really, yeah, I agree. They were not afraid to kind of step outside the um, typical comfort zone of black metal. There's atmospheric black metal in there. There's a lot of like DSBM tropes as well. I mean, it all comes together and it's a at, harrowing experience. I love it. At some point, it just crosses so many different lines of black metal. And it just is, I'm just going to call it black metal just to keep things way simpler on me. <laughs> because I'm, it becomes I, its own thing, though, is what I'm it saying. It really does. Dodes for yeah. it, it's its own entity. And if you're going to talk about greek black metal or even underground black metal in general you should not go far without mentioning dozeford because they that band has done so much they've been going for over 20 years now and mm -hmm. it shows one last stop that i'd say in 2018 mm -hmm. do you know where i'm going with this i'm just gonna pretend i don't okay that's fine uh <laughs> when i say this name you should really Everyone should know that this is really not necessarily what put Transcending Security on the map, but it really opened the gates for them. And I was so happy to see this album do as well as it is because uh -huh. the band is great, the music is fantastic, and it really showed people the flavor profile that Transcending Obscurity could bring to the table. And we're talking about Unsettling Whispers from Gyria. Or however oh, you want to pronounce it. Oh my gosh. This I album was say that. blew yeah, man. everyone out of the water. I haven't met a single person that has a bad thing to say about it. I feel like to consider Gyria as just straight black metal would be to severely undermine what's done in not just the Settling Whispers, the, their whole sound in general their latest album limbo has created so many more waves and rightfully so it's a fantastic album but but unsettling whispers is a masterpiece in its own right it doesn't have traditional black metal vocals even if you were to stretch the word traditional a little bit it, it really makes their sound their own and you may hear that from us a lot tonight but Without a doubt, Gyria makes their own sound, and they hold nothing back. Absolutely nothing. Very emotional performances on there, too. Super. Like, I, mm. I felt it in my soul, man. That album, it yeah. made me feel emotions I didn't know existed, really. Ooh. All right. Well, shooting into 2019 now, uh -huh. um, Transcending Obscurity Records did not stop... They did not stop. They did not slow down whatsoever. If anything, and, they sped up. Yeah, 2019 had just oh, banger after banger after banger. Um, if you don't mind here, I just want to say right off the bat, and once again, just like with 
Um, just like with Arketh, we also had the first release of the year was Aramith, oh. Carrier of Weight. I mean, if you already know this, but no one else seems to know. So, the mastermind behind Aramith, Mo, as far as I know, that's his actual first name, Mo, is a very nice man. Uh, he's in a, he's in at least one other band. I'm sure I think he has like seven others, but he never sits still. He's ridiculous. He had another sludgy doom band that put out an album not too long ago under the name of Dragged, whose mm-hmm. debut solo debut album We Summon was way too underappreciated. Dragged itself was awesome. Then I found out that the guitarist, Mo, had this other band called Aramid. And I was like, oh, cool, you know, maybe it'll be something I'm interested in. And then I found out, oh, they signed the Transcending Obscurity. That's fucking cool. And then, hey, their new album's over an hour long. Even better. Too, and like, I'm yeah. blown away. The, the way they combined traditional doom metal, but then you had a lot of that sludge element to it. And it and it created this 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 tone that was so so dense. I have never experienced a journey as like, as epic as this. You know, w- one of my things with Doom is that sometimes it really does feel like the genre itself is going through like a volume war to like oh who can sound the loudest and whoever's the yeah, loudest is yeah. the best. But yeah. Aramid takes that to a completely different level. Um, they take it to, to an extreme that is completely unnecessary and should not work, but it works far too well because there's fucking lore to the music. We got fucking length riffs. Apparently, Earth. some this, apparently like the final song, Cocoon of Soul, that was supposedly recorded in one take, which you hear that and you go, you want to fucking run that by me again? They did what in one take? They did a 30-minute song in one fucking take. Fuck off. How is that even possible? How is that even possible? Mo, uh, call me on Facebook. Uh, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? <laughs> We would love to hear that, honestly. I'm very, very curious how that came together. I mean, just reading the reviews here on Bandcamp, like, everyone agrees with us, man. Oh, I'm like, on there. The entire <laughs> internet agrees with us here. Like, just, Aramid killed it. Debut, well, too. Well, they didn't even have anything, like, they didn't have an EP before this, no. or a demo, or nothing. It was just they carry of weight. There you fucking go. Like, All they had was Froth is Beckoning, and that cover art, and that's it. And the vinyl sold out before the album even came out, which I feel like was very gratifying to me as someone who was, like, leading up to it. I was already extremely excited, just given the circumstances for me personally. And I remember coming back from my girlfriend's, and I was sitting in a Waffle House, and the pre-orders went live, and there I am while my waffles are coming by, and I'm fucking buying everything on my phone. I need that vinyl, and yes, the I need it. It's for my survival, my doctor told me. That's right, yeah. Food, water, Aramid vinyl. Yeah. There's so much more in 2018. We gotta move on, but... Oh, Aramid, we do, we do. We, we just 10. wanted to fangirl for a second there over Aramid. I'll fangirl um, all fucking day. Roga Johansson had entrance to the Otherware in 2019. I did get that on the on CD, the, the box set for that. And man, that is just such a satisfying album. Mm-hmm. So much, like, it is such a golden age um, ode to, to that sort of... Um, that, that Swedish old school sound, but he makes it um, less about what style he's playing in and more about just enter- pure entertainment value. The riffs on there, everything about it, it it's got a lot of um, uh, speed involved, a lot of atmosphere too. It, it is a super comprehensive record, and I was just super happy with um, everything about it. Roga Johansson, man, you, you are a god. I mean, if you can, if you can have a band named literally just by your full name you know you've made it other death metal album i love well since we're on roga's um since we're talking about them uh mm-hmm. we also have the tower of the morbid by paganizer which we, we talked about paganizer already um now i will 
admit that I did prefer Land of Weeping Souls over mm -hmm. the Tower of the Morbid. The last only, only because I'll explain myself. I felt like the um, the songwriting was a bit repetitive compared to Land of Weeping Souls for Paganizer's standard. You know, mm -hmm. like if, as a standalone death metal album, fantastic stuff. You know, did not disappoint. Um, it's just I had such a high expectation after uh, Weeping Souls that I was like, I don't even know if I could have been satisfied with the next <laughs> album, probably. You know, like, seriously. God damn it, just... guys, you set the bar too high. What the fuck uh, are you doing? Uh, you I can't enjoy anything without now because that album's too good. However, that is not to say that Tower of the Morbid did not bring forth fresh, creative, awesome, kick-ass death metal, um, and I got a great kick out of it, um, regardless. Oh, yeah. My shitty opinion, so, yeah, man, I... That's pretty much all I have to say about Paganizer at this point, because I feel like I'm sucking their dick too hard. Since you've already said you're more of a death mode guy, and I respect that, um, uh -huh. there are two... I'm going to throw around, throw around the word fusion. There are two fusion albums that came out in 2019 that I want your opinion of, since they brought in death and another type of metal. Uh, first off, uh, one that... I, both of these I feel like didn't get enough attention, but the one I feel like didn't get nearly enough attention was uh, Gorgang, Gorgong, whatever. Um, Gorgang, ne hell Neon yeah! Graves. Hashtag Gorgang! Rep <laughs> okay, no, that's cringy. Uh, Gorgang is amazing. Look, I'm 21, man. I still got some of that cringe. <laughs> fuck off. I'm, I'm about to turn 24, so fuck off. You're an old man, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's fine. My girlfriend finds <laughs> red hairs, and she's like, mm, Methuselah over here. I that was fall. not their first album. I believe they had more material before uh, Neon Graves, if I'm not mistaken here. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they had money. an EP. Yeah, they had an EP. So these guys already kind of put their foot in the ground a little bit, but um, taking a look at the freaking lineup. I mean, we got Taylor Nordberg, who does um, he plays in Rib Spreader, for example. Mm. Um, and then we have Jeremy Kling, who now plays in XDO, as well as also Rib Spreader. Venom Inc. So there's a lot of talent going in here. Yeah, this, this, um, they're prolific. Yeah. Other than great riffs and just, I think what makes this album so punishing is the is the mix man it's the production i mm. think really at the end of the also, day the for mix. me it's the fact that it's so rapid fire there's yeah the, there's only probably like two maybe three out three songs that bring the chorus back because all the songs are just we're, we're moving along we're, we're here to slice some flesh spray some blood and we're gonna fucking yeah. move on however fast we please Working, uh, I gotta say, yeah, I, I'm not sure because here on Bandcamp it says death metal slash crust. Um, I don't quite, I'm not super familiar with crust other than like Discharge and like some of those older bands or like if a band uses it in their sound, I know that's crust punk. I feel like um, Gore Gang really did kind of make their own uh, fusion here. That I was yeah, like, the other one I did want to Yeah, I was gonna ask. About. What was the second? Uh -huh. uh, War Crab. Damn, damn Ooh, I, hope, I was hoping you'd say that. Damn right. <laughs> Death metal. Um, some sludge in there, too. The sludge is worked in very menacingly. It's so um, well done. Because it adds fuck, that man. extra layer of just thick fuck-off heaviness. Thick as fuck, yeah. The, the riffs on here were huge. The speed was huge. I feel like I'm using the same words, but really, guys, these are standout death metal releases for us. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I think um, what really makes an album fantastic to me, right, is not just having good songwriting, not just having a good production, but the ability for me to enjoy it all the way through multiple goddamn times. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm coming back to an album over and over, or if there's like, oh, I'm in the mood for um, Blood of the Blood God from the War Cry album. Like, that's when you know an album really, really stuck around yeah. and, and made itself known to me. Because, like, yeah, War Crab was definitely one of those bands that just blew me out of the water as well, man. I, <laughs> definitely a highlight for that year. Probably the one that surprised me the most. So, for the other three Doom releases I want to talk about, there are th they come in three different kinds. The one that 
I expected was to be good because of the reputation. The it came out of nowhere that I was like, holy shit, this is really good. And the underrated. underrated. The first one, Officium Trist, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong. Uh, the Death of Gaia. That is Officium Trist is. A bona fide underground classic. Like, if you know your underground, you know Officium Trist and the Death of Gaia fucking delivers. Uh, the Drownings, the Radiant Dark. I was not expecting it to be nearly as good as it was. It was so. It still hits hard. You don't have to be in the right mood to listen to it. You don't have to put yourself in the mindset. You just hit play and it just takes you. And then the one that. I feel like doesn't get near enough credit is Esso Genesis uh, self-titled album which is a trip all on its own and I highly suggest that those are all fantastic death doom bands that are all worth your time for sure I'm just going to throw out some names really quick of bands that I do did also enjoy quite a bit um, Hatred Prayer by Trench Warfare mm. um I can't really say anything other than a fucking punishing, brutal ass album. It just does not stop ever for any reason. I I don't think there was a single breather on this one at all. No. Like at any point. So I yeah, if you want. Anything. Yeah, yeah. If you want, if you want an album to just blow you out of the water over and over, um, Trench Warfare for sure. I like this uh, Diseased by Bone. That's my favorite favorite. I'm very split here. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I think it would have to be the... I think it's got to be War Crab, really. Hmm. That's not That's bad. my favorite. Uh, yeah. I already yeah. knew mine. It's Aramith. That was my... Like, <laughs> I was torn between my number one and number two picks, but there was just... The, the, there was just the magic to the Aramith record that I, that I, I had to put it above my favorite band which is just saying it out loud feels blasphemous to me but i i still stand by it well i'll even say like this label absolutely changed my life and i'll i'll stand by that 100 percent. i agree with you man seriously i wouldn't be doing this series if that wasn't the case right no like, this isn't this isn't just some other label not be nearly as strong as it was without transcending obscurity really opening my eyes Listen, so cool all a message to you, man, before you get all humble on us like you always do, I just want to say you are not only providing some great fucking shit for, for the masses, but you are inspiring people to write, to make more music and start their own bands. And the albums that are out on your label, they're revolutionizing certain genres, man. They're, they're changing the fucking game. We talk a lot about in metal about um, who's the next big four going to be? Who's going to pass on the torch? Who's going to do this and that? It's so mixed right now. There's a lot of oversaturation. Mm. Every band wants to be the next fucking big band. Or maybe they don't want to be, but either way, they, they do get lost in the midst of all this insanity uh, online streaming blah 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 but TOR is a fucking good hub for just great music so Kunal thank you he's a very beautiful man inside and out his hair is gorgeous I, I know his hair is gorgeous <laughs>